there are not many game developers who can do everything. Um, but Adam does code, art, sound, can cut videos. He's from Canada, so he's naturally a lawyer. <laughs> But he's also the person who fixed the render cycle in GDScript. And he has some fun other projects like the port from Doom, the very old game, to the, into the Godot engine. And how this worked and what he learned and what you can tell us about it, we will hear from you now. Thank you very much. Thank you. I well, 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 my mic was what doesn't my, my mic was it, why, why, wasn't on. That so was I'll answer. try. I'll start again. So I hope you are all well. That's nice to have a nice crowd here in uh, Munich in uh, this uh, room. So uh, I'll start uh, with uh, this. So uh, I did it. I ported Doom to Godot. Oh, wrong side. Oh, sorry. Technical difficulties. Previous line, okay. There's lags. There's lag in my phone. So, uh, a C and C plus plus new ported Doom to run in Godot. So, I did it. I ported Doom to Godot. Oh, this is our sound. Finally, it's not that one. Uh, I'm talking about uh, this one. So, for you, though, for you, uh, for those of you who are, who are uh, not old enough, uh, this is the original uh, game uh, released in. The so I'll. Uh, so let's rip and tear. Who am I? Let's start with this. Uh, my name is Adam Scott. I'm uh, Adam Scott on GitHub. Fortunately, I have uh, the, own, the rights on that name in GitHub. Uh, I'm from Fregroup, Quebec. Oh, uh, it's quite, quite a little small. So it's uh, one hour and a half from Montreal by car. Uh, formerly a, a lawyer. So uh, as I told before, it's more common than you think in Godot, especially if you're Canadian and in the Godot production team. Uh, shout out to my Canadian compatriot, Clay John, who just, just did the rendering keynote. So uh, I always uh, had uh, interest with the idea of using Godot to make games. I uh, began uh, with simple PRs in 2020 and 2022. Then uh, I rediscovered creating games in 2021. I, uh, won, uh, with, I won the 42nd Godot Wild Jam with my little game named Tomb Blaster. I'd really uh, had fun making everything. Models, textures, level design, mechanics, music, sound effects. Yes, I think everything is the keyword here. Uh, I did a little thing in Godot 4, so uh, I, I fixed a bug that was there in Godot 4, Alpha 1, that uh, cyclic dependencies errors in Godot 3, they were still there in Godot 4, and uh, I fixed them. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks, thank, you, thank you very much for clapping for a very dirty act, but the act works. So uh, I organized meetings with the GScript team because nobody uh, would do it. Uh, I, yes, this image is not really the GScript team, but uh, it works. So I'm the uh, GScript maintainer since April 2023. I was sponsored, uh, began to be sponsored by GDQuest in May 2023. Uh, and then since June 2023, I joined the Godot production team. So I'm really happy to be uh, there to help uh, the community and the project. So why Doom? Like, why, why, <laughs> why not? Uh, <laughs> so uh, why Doom? I, 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 it's a few slides that I have bullet points. So that Doom was released in 1993. It's one of the most influential games that were ever made. It revolutionized like the first-person shooter genre. 
uh, it was open source in 1997, so that's why uh, it's ported to everything. Uh, I'll show you later. So, and the code is self-contained, so it's very easy to port Doom. So that's very fun to do it. So, like I said, Doom runs on everything. And I say everything, I mean Doom runs on all consoles. So it runs on Microsoft DOS. It runs on Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive here in Europe, uh, 32X. It runs on the Atari Jaguar. It runs on 3DO. See, this is the infamous port of uh, Doom on the 3DO. I want to shout out Rebecca Einman, who did the f infamous port from scratch in less than 10 weeks. She is now using Godot for her ports, so she has a port company now. Uh, I uh, put the Nintendo SNES port, I put the European uh, release just for you. Again, the European release for uh, Sony PlayStation. So there's the Doom, uh, the US release on the left, the U European release on the right. I don't know why the Doom guy has a bandolier. That's pretty interesting. Um, there's a port on the Game Boy Advance. It was made teen-friendly, the blood is green. Uh, and even in Japan, in the NEC PC-98. So uh, Doom runs on new consoles. So the latest port, port by id Software uh, it makes it available on every console. It uses Unity, and uh, it's available on PC2, on Steam, Epic Store, or GRG. And really, Doom, the original one, is dirt cheap to buy. I highly encourage you to buy you uh, buy uh, the Ultimate Doom package if you haven't already. So Doom on, runs on what? It runs on printer. So for here in the screen, uh, for those in the, the scene, it's a printer uh, screen with the buttons on the right. Uh, so it's pretty uh, special. So I, uh, Doom runs on digital camera from 1998. So this is a video from DGR. I'll put you the first 10 seconds. That's what I call a point-and-shoot camera. That's that's one uh, a one-liner if it, if it's this one. So uh, it runs even on a pregnancy test. So it's only natural to make it run on I I I to from a game engine. Uh, the question is how to do this in Godot. So, uh, like I said, it's open source since 1997, so as uh, Godot and Doom are open source, it should be easy, right? Yeah, kind of. Well, in order to do this, I need to, I need to explain how did I do it. So, I'll explain uh, what is GD extension. So, this is a pretty new, nice uh, and new technology for, uh, for Godot 4. So, I'll read you the definition. GD extension is a Godot specific technology that lets you, that, that lets the engine interact with native shared libraries at runtime. You can use it to run native code without compiling it with the engine. So, that's the definition. But for those who are not te technology inclined, you may be at a stroke reading these words. So let me explain. So yeah, I just said that. Uh, so how to extend Godot 3? So in Godot 3, it was not the same. It was not as easy as uh, Godot 4 with GD extension. So is it possible to do a GD script plugin in Godot 3 to uh, ac uh, accomplish what you want to do? Uh, if yes, great, nice. Don't need uh, anything to do it, but oh, it's not possible. So you have to edit the Godot source code, then compile the custom engine, then distribute the custom engine. That's quite cumbersome. So the Godot, so usually the Godot release uh, from the website of GodotEngine.org is at the top. There's your game at the bottom. So uh, you need your custom own custom engine to, uh, to, 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 to use your feature. And if you want to distribute it as a plugin or something, you must like, tell users to download your custom version and, so, and, 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 and things like this. So it's not that easy. But with 
then was GD extension was created. So GD extension was made in, with, the extension, with the intention of exposing as much functionality as possible in order to create extensions that have the power to do as much as creating new modules from within the Godot engine source code by itself. So it, it works uh, flawlessly uh, between the base game engine, your game, and the GD extension you created, or you downloaded. So why would I want to program something else than in GDScript? Like, for if you're new to programming and then you start pr using GDScript, you say, oh, I can do anything. But GDScript is nice, but it's not suited for every task. So it's super performant in general programming and game logic, but not so for computing tasks. So imagine you have a lot of computation to do or a lot of uh, big calculus things and such, so it's not the most performant uh, uh, scripting engine to, uh, that exists. So imagine that you, that also, if imagine that you don't find a plugin in the asset library and you want in your game or app integrate machine learning inside your game, or you want to integrate programs like Git, just like the game hack and slash did. What if you want to use SQLite database and store data? Or what if you want to read PDFs, generate PDFs? What if the program already complete in, in what if the program you want to integrate is already complete in another language and you want to interface it with Godot? So why do? Like I like I said, the code is self-contained. You just have to plug and play. So that's perfect. It should be pretty easy to modify it and bind it with Godot. What is Godot CPP? That's another thing. So what is what are bindings? I'll explain just a little bit. So bindings are libraries for languages that know how to speak to another environment. So the, the, the bindings for GD extension know how to speak with GD extension technology inside your Godot executable. That's perfect because I can, well, that's perfect. I can use Godot CPP to bind it, to bind Godot with uh, my CPP project, my C++ project. Uh, I can use Godot CPP to do this. Uh, Godot CPP is the of only official binding that exists uh, currently uh, that is supported by, uh, by the Godot engine uh, team by itself. Uh, and I, I want to shout out to David, uh, to shout out David Snowpeck that currently maintains the Godot CPP. That is the, the lead maintainer of the repo, but there's plenty of contributors that contribute to Godot CPP. I want to, if you are, if you are a rushed CM, if I don't know if I, I spelled that right, right. So if you use Rust, there's Godot Rust that is maintained by Bromion, the one of the members of the community. So uh, I should maybe quit uh, Discord. Uh, it doesn't work, so I'll continue. Um, so there's a few projects that intend to expose other languages, such as Go and Swift. Talking about Swift, there's a talk today at 5 p.m. Uh, by Miguel de Icaza about this. It's, it's, in tit it's, a, it's titled Swift Godot, Fixing the Multi-Million Dollar Mistake. I encourage you to uh, go to his talk after this if you're interested in uh, Godot bindings. And his talk, his talk is in English. Uh, this website says that it is in Dutch, but it's in English. Uh, why Godot CPP? Because, well, Doom is written in C, and C is a superset of C++, so I can use C inside the C++ project. And writing Doom in another language uh, is way too much complicated. It, would, it, could, it could introduce new bugs. Why rewrite a software when you can use it as is? So, I did that little thing that is called Godot Doom node. So this is the core of the port. Uh, you have the node here. Uh, I don't have a custom icon yet, but uh, it does everything to run Doom in Godot. It's just a texture rect be, uh, behind it, so it extends texture rect. Uh, just set the asset paths and on the left, on the right, sorry. Import them and enable the node. It supports even Doom-based mods. Uh, you can play with WSD if you want. It can even run multiple instances of Dune simultaneously. Sorry for the crappy frame rate. It's the capture of on my uh, crappy laptop that uh, made it uh, run slowly, but uh, it, it doesn't li lag like this uh, on real time. Then I did the, the little Doom player. 
what it is. It enables you to play directly inside the editor, so you can kill time by killing demons. And if you're caught playing Doom, you can always say that you just studied the masterful and timeless game design of John Romero. So I want to shout out to, uh, to uh, shout out to Scott Campbell. Scott Campbell, uh, as well as much as I wanted to brag to be the first to do it, uh, somebody beat me uh, to the title of the first. So uh, Scott is a slaty dev on GitHub. Uh, he shared his Doom one, he shared his Doom port a month ago on Reddit without any involvement of my part. I kept the project secret on my side, uh, but he was the fir first one to beat me publicly. Uh, I think the fact that there was multiple Doom ports inside uh, for Godot uh, is a testament to GDA extension, to Godot CPP abilities, and the, to the Doom's legacy itself. I'm jealous of the name uh, Godoom. Uh, I'm a little jealous that I didn't think of that myself. So, here's the plan of the talk. So, oh, I'll switch my, sorry. So, I'll tell you how I made the Godot Doom known. It will be the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, to GD extension and Godot CPP. Uh, all together in uh, LT Mix. Uh, I, I really, I really, I really don't want to overwhelm you if you're a beginner or something like that, or if you're an artist. This talk is intended for beginners. Uh, but it, it, I'll, sure, I'll make sure to, to try to explain. Uh, oh, I must try to speak uh, directly into, into the microphone. So I'll try my best to ex make sure that uh, I explain each step of what I'm doing. Uh, hopefully, there will be time for your QA. I hope so. Uh, using Golo CPP is a great way to learn C and C++. Not only that, but it's a good way to understand how Godot works. Uh, it could even prepare you to understand how Godot works internally, and you could even contribute back to Godot. So let's begin. So I'll talk about the setup of a GD extension project. Uh, what's, what is uh, the Godot CPP template? So this is the Godot CPP template, it's the GitHub page. Uh, it's a template for, of a project for building a fast GD extension project in C++. What it does, it comes with a build system, it's easy to set up, uh, it's easy to set up auto, -compl uh, auto completion, and I want to shout out uh, 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 Patrick Exner, with, uh, why, uh, which goes by the name of Flame Lizard that, that maintains the, te the template. So I highly suggest you to, uh, if you want to s you try um, the template, oh, I'll go back. To, if you want to try the template to follow uh, the documentation about building Godot itself, if you install all the prerequisites uh, and the requirements that are needed for your platform, you should have no problems to build your uh, C++ project of Godot CPP. So. I said that my talk was for beginners, so we'll, let's let's say let's see how C and C++ compile. So what is compilation? <laughs> like it's I think it's 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 a must uh, if we want to to, uh, to 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 see how it works. So computers can't read. Like you cannot just pull a, a, a text to a computer and, and make the computer like uh, uh, think that the computer will understand directly what you read. Uh, not even programming languages. They can read that. So this is compiling code. It's take is to take human code, to parse it, and compile it into machine code, which is like binary numbers, like uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and such. So uh, the arrow means that the computer parses the human code and transform it, transform it into an optimized machine code that is readable for a specific processor. That's important. So for artists or non-programmers, this isn't machine code. So uh, funny thing, uh, this is a, well, is, this is a valid this hello world in C. Uh, funny thing, I consider myself an artist, so jokes on me. Um, there's two types of languages. So there's uh, certain that are dynamic and others are static. So 
certain languages are dynamic, so what you see here is when you write code, the time when you write code, and then on the right is the runtime when you execute the code. So when when you for dynamic languages, you just when you distribute the uh, the human code, you distribute it in the run uh, on the runtime environment. And then the, there's a software that will compile it into machine code and then will execute it. If the arrow appears. So uh, certain languages are dynamic. Uh, dynamic. Uh, there's JavaScript, Python, Ruby, PHP, Lua, and GDScript, just to, na to name a few. So the advantages of uh, dynamic languages uh, is that type checking is done on runtime. Uh, well, it's more uh, disadvantages, uh, but there's more. It's more flexible uh, to write code uh, dynamically, and but it tends to be less optimized. Uh, they compile under the scene. You don't see the compilation yourself. But other languages are static. So when you write your human code, you compile it uh, uh, before. So you render machine code, and then you distribute the machine code uh, to the ones or who need the, the, the binary. And then you, the, the, the client can execute your machine code uh, directly. That was my screensaver. So uh, other languages are static. There is C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Go, Rust, and Swift. So type checking is done on compile time. This is less flexible code, but it tends to be more optimized. So you must explicitly compile your project if you want to distribute your project uh, results. So I just want to say that modern compile language, have it easy. So in Rust, you just have to type cargo build in your command line, uh, Swift, Swift build, and go, go build. Uh, that usually, they usually come with a package manager that automates the acquisition and the use of third-party libraries. And the modern languages uh, system, like the project Cargo, Swift, and Go, know that there's a project in your directory, and they can build the entire thing. But C++ is an old language. Like 1995, like I'm from 1998, but yeah, I, I'm old too. Uh, 1999, no, 1989, sorry. Uh, English is not my first language. Uh, C is even older. Uh, uh, C is like from 1972, 73. Uh, and C and C++ is different. Like this is for compiling just one file and it overflows. Uh, so that's no good. So and then when you compile, you must after all the compilation, you must link the files between all of them to uh, result to the final binary. Whew, that's that's a mouthful. So what is a, bi a build system? Like remember this: uh, a build system automates the completion steps needed. It removes the need to write manually each argument in the command line. It automates the completion linker steps. So I strike down completely fixes uh, because it doesn't do magic by itself, but it simply that fills down the forms for you. So you have your make file or your uh, file that you uh, that is handled by the build system. It's and it's a series of rules that it executes to uh, to to execute to 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 compile your project. So. It will the, the, the make uh, engine will search for the files, then it will find them and compile them for every uh, file. If the animation follows, uh, and then it will link them together and build your file. So this template, I'm always talking about the Godot C++ template. The template uses scans. And scans is uh, uh, the um, uh, build engine that we use. So there's a lot of info there, but uh, it's an easy program to it's, it's easy to program custom with the logic with this. For so this is why we went with scans. But you don't have to know how to program scans. Uh, I'll show you why uh, how. So this is the part of the live setup of a Godot CPP template project. But the problem is is that I have a mic now and then my headset doesn't work. So, oh, yeah. So thanks, uh, Clay, uh, my fellow uh, former lawyer uh, from Canada. So let's do this. I'll just, uh, I'll do my best. Oh, sorry. My, 
my mouse isn't working like it should. I'll just clone my screen now, apply, cancel the modifications. So I'll exit the live, uh, uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, my time is okay, I think. Uh, I'll just F11. So I'll just go to, uh, oh, I'll open a new browser, new file. Window. So I'll go to github.com, uh, Godot engine, and then Godot CPP template. So, how to do this? I'll zoom in a little bit for you, for your eyes. So, uh, you just have to click use this template, create a new repository. Then, on repository name, you just have to type your name of your project. I'll name it uh, Godocon 2023 uh, Live. Uh, it will be private because uh, it's, uh, it will not be the cleanest code. It will be, I'll create the, direct, the repository, so it clone. So templates are useful at GitHub. It's a simple project that you can uh, create a project from. So I'll use a code here. I'll copy the SSH uh, path. I'll go just a file there. I say git clone this. Clones, I think it's a word. Uh, so I'll just open Obsidian, I have notes. Uh, steps. So, okay, so it, it does work. Okay, thank you, Clay. Sorry for, uh, you can applause Clay for his hard work. So uh, the first thing you need to do when you uh, cloned uh, a project, you just go to the, uh, I'll just close this, thank you Saracen. So uh, I'll just uh, go to the directory and then I run this, the, the following command, it's git submodule update init recursive, that's scary but what it does is only uh, to uh, populate the submodule Godot CPP. So uh, it's the Godot CPP itself project that is included in yours. Uh, so then I can open the project in a VS Code. So I'll do code insiders dot. So it's supposed to open. I zoom in. So there's a few steps that I recommend you to do. So the first thing you'll do, you'll go to extensions and then you'll do at recommended. So we, we uh, recommend two Packages. So it, the one, first one is the C C++ extension, extension pack that is uh, necessary to do uh, C and C++ uh, uh, builds, and then Python that is needed. We may add new uh, extensions, uh, maybe if they feel needed. But feel free. Uh, I use VS Code because it's it's popular, but you can use any uh, code editor that you want. Uh, that's uh, a given. So. Once that is done, I'll just create a file that in my VS Code directory for my settings that is called settings.json, and that inside the settings.json, I'll edit editor dot format on save. This is not needed, but it's really, really, really useful. And then there's c cpp dot intellisense engine, you put that to default because uh, it, otherwise it can mess up with some things. It's not necessary again, but it, it fixes some maybe potential issues. So with that enabled, you can go to uh, the command line, you can do control shift P and then, oh, it's not the, the, the one, I, uh, yes, it, it is. So I write down uh, C, C++, edit JSON, you'll, uh, you'll select that and it will create a C CPP properties.json. That's useful because we need to configure uh, some things here. So by default, uh, VS Code uses the uh, workspace folders, every file in the directory that of your project to, uh, to search for paths. That's not what we want in this project. So you just remove this and then you'll add in uh, compile commands and then you'll paste this here, remove the excess quotes, and then you have you add there compile commands.json. I think that's what uh, it needs to be. So yes, it would complain that it, it, it does not exist yet, but we'll, we'll, we, we will uh, create it soon. So 
you now need to modify the S construct file. So this is the file of the build system that I talked just uh, before. There's a lib name that is named extension name. I don't think that is this is intended for your project. So you just have to change it for uh, I'll tell uh, I'll uh, name my na lib uh, L world. So uh, then uh, what you need to do is uh, to edit the demo bin bin example that GD extension. You can rename it what you want and uh, rename the entry symbol here. You have to edit the path. There's a currently an issue with the template. The paths are not updated to the right paths. Uh, it will be fixed uh, fixed uh, soon. Uh, but you edit this. I'll change project soon, so I, I'll not edit this file right now. Uh, and then I'll. What we need to do is to go to uh, to the terminal, go to the Godot CPP f uh, directory that we uh, initialize. So it's there, the Godot CPP directory. So inside this, you you, you use scans. So scans is the, the you invoke the uh, the build engine to build the Godot C++ project. It's needed because it will generate some template files for you that doesn't exist right now. So you must generate them to be able to interact with Godot CPP. So you, you execute scans here. I will not do it, but uh, you just have to type scans and then enter. And then go back one directory, go back to your root, and then run scans itself on your project. So it's important to do it twice, but uh, it's important to do this in order because it will uh, give you some headaches otherwise. So. After this, I'll just change the project for the cooked one, the pre-made, like a, in the kitchen show, the pre-made one. So uh, it will be there. So I have uh, something to tell you. Uh, I didn't prepare enough uh, in advance, and I didn't add the time to completely uh, complete the project, the demo project. But uh, I can explain you what's the step to come. So. You need to create, uh, I'll just uh, go here, I'll rename them uh, back and back because they are backups. So you need to create two files. So there's hello world.cpp and there's hello world.h. So you just have to uh, pretty much. I, I'm seeing the time. I don't think I have the time to like uh, explain you everything, but I'll do this. I'll explain you uh, by copy pasting. So uh, you must include uh, the uh, node uh, header file. So uh, I'll just explain you what's the difference between H and CPP. So H are header files. So they declare what. Or what are what is intended to be in the CPP file? So that's not exactly that, but it's uh, pretty easy to think about this like that way. So in my H file of Hello World, I declare that there's my class Hello World that is a public node, so it, it extends node. Uh, it needs the GD class here uh, and the namespace there that wraps around uh, the public uh, class. Uh, I declare my variable, so I have a hello name uh, private uh, string. I have helper uh, function, so get hello name, set hello name. It will be needed afterwards. Uh, there's protected protected bind methods. That is an important method because um, if uh, I go to oh, there was uh, some noise. Uh, if I uh, I will tell you. Oh, I'll tell you. So, oh, so uh, I'll explain you um, the bind methods really quick. Uh, but this is a sample uh, class file for it does uh, it does not a lot of things. Hello world, but uh, in hello world, I go back, uh, take the back file, copy it finally, uh, and I'll explain you the bind methods, and then I'll. Go to my uh, continue my slides, but the main methods is how you bind your C++ code with your uh, the good side of things. So you can bind, you can declare. Oh, in Godot I have a get name. 
function. So you bind it to hello world get hello name. And then you have a set hello name that you bind it with set hello name. And then you can add a property like add a property in the editor to be edited in the uh, inspector. So uh, it's uh, rather easy to uh, add properties like that. And then when you have this uh, and you compile that, uh, so the CPP file is the implementation, so it's like the, the real code is there, and the H file is only to declare stuff. So uh, you'll be able to. I'll try to, to follow up to this to be able to uh, for beginners to to. Oh yes, okay, sorry. So uh, I'll get my mic just a little back. Um, so uh, for. I just lost my train of thought. Uh, so yes, uh, the H file, the CPP file, that made it so that if you run this GD extension and you run it with the, the demo, uh, you'll be able in the inspector to add a name. And then if you go play the node, the node will each frame process and then say hello world. So you can applause for this demo uh, that is uh, only uh, in uh, was spoken or not. <laughs> uh, I'll go back to my slides. Sorry again, uh, it was a timing issue. Uh, oh, it doesn't work. I'll just join, apply. Yes, I didn't see the, the, the pop-up in the screen. So uh, I join, oh, it's already there. So I click there, I'll function F12, F11, sorry. So how did I port Doom to Godot? So I needed to add a tablespoon of Doom, so I used a, a Doom generic, that is a, a library, oh, I'll just take my notes. Uh, that is a library from uh, just so I use Doom Generic. It it transforms Dooms into a library of sorts. So it's really easy to port Doom with this uh, this project. Uh, it's based on FB Doom. That is practical because, uh, in a sense, uh, FB Doom makes uh, available the uh, the Doom pixels, uh, so the rendering of the Doom engine. It makes it available to the frame buffer, so uh, it's quite practical to have access to that frame buffer. So it uh, it um, it declares uh, some functions. Uh, Doom generic declares some functions like DG init, draw frame, sleep milliseconds, get ticks milliseconds, get key, and get mouse states. Just have to implement this in your C file and then or CPP file, and then you uh, can start Godot and edit interact with Go Doom. Uh, it's a very simple interface, and then you just have to add water. You just have to call Doom Generic Create, and then Doom Generic Tick when you want to update Doom. So that's pretty handy. Um, did it? Yes, uh, I underlined this. Uh, so which type of port it is? This is important because it impacts the next lines. Uh, there's multiple types of ports. There's a pure port, the remaster port, and the remake port. It, it more or less uh, changes our work you put in the port. And uh, yes, so uh, my port is uh, more on the purest side of things. We'll reuse the logic and the display from the code base, and we'll only use sounds and music. Will be re-implemented by with new technologies. So how did I? Uh, and all multiple instances of Doom. That's uh, quite interesting. So Doom is, in it is intended to, run, to be run standalone. So as Doom itself was programmed to run as a program, it mutates the global state, and it makes it difficult to integrate multiple instances of Doom in a single project to have multiple nodes uh, running instances uh, differently. So there's no Doom new. Like, you cannot instantiate Dooms. Uh, with uh, the old C code. So what would be nice is to have separate programs, uh, to have your GD extension that summons, uh, that enables you to load the Godot Doom nodes, and, and that connects to an external Doom program and as many times you need. So it will be very useful if we could share memory between the, those programs. 
So imagine that you have your Godot Doom node, and what about I instantiate Doom, and then I share memory with it? Like, it would be awesome to have this. Uh, like, share memory, like the screen or sound and music. Uh, it could be really, really, really handy. So I just skip forward my s animation slides. Sorry for the delay. So what I did, it exists. There's a thing, thing that exists in uh, Linux that is called shared memory. So there's uh, functions like share memory open, and I map memory directly inside uh, with this function. So I can set up uh, like uh, a struct that this lists all the memory that exists uh, for the game that I want to interact with. And that enables me to interact with the, sh the instances that I spawn. So uh, essentially with this, we plan ahead what we want to share between the programs. And you must think like structs, what are they? They are like uh, this representation. They are like squares that you plan ahead what, uh, what memory you want to assign to. So you have your frame buffer, your sound instruction, your music instruction, and so every such. There's, they can be as big as, uh, I think frame buffer takes eight megabytes. And then you, I have like things that takes one byte. So uh, it very varies. Uh, it varies. It's not to scale. So, but did I say that, was, that I was a newbie? I think I said this in the beginning because I talked yesterday with Ariel Mansour, uh, the Godot co-founder with uh, Juan Lignensky yesterday, and he asked me why I didn't use threads uh, instead of separate programs. He said that it was much simpler and no need to separate programs as each thread has its own global state. I answered that uh, I didn't think of that. So thanks Ariel for the tip. Uh, I enc highly encourage you to uh, watch his talk in uh, his talk from Godot Con uh, 2019 in Brussels. It's related because he ported uh, King Dreams uh, to the Switch. So displaying Carnage, uh, it uses the DG screen buffer from the Doom Generic uh, library, and so this is like. Uh, the screen, I imagine that this, this is the screen. It's a DG screen buffer. It's like an array of in size of Doom Generic Res X multiplied by Doom Generic Res Y multiplied by RGBA. So it looks rather like, like that. So that's quite intimidating if you don't know what it means. But in its parts form, if you split values by four, oh, it's pixels. So you can group them by four. It's red, green, uh, blue, alpha. It's possible to pass this in Godot. We just have to put this, these values in a packed byte array. Then update the image texture resource that is linked to the Godot node. That extends, like I said before, texture rect. So how to blast demons in stereo? So I hit the limit of Doom Generic, because Doom Generic was made to especially uh, handle uh, video, like displaying the frame buffer, and to handle input. But, well, handle input, the input you give it to, to, to Doom Generic, but it doesn't handle directly sounds. So uh, we must edit the source code itself to support sounds. So what I did is to, I, I used Godot sound capabilities, like, Godot, we can pass data to Godot to play the sound, and uh, Godot can play the sound if I want to. So uh, I used here a doom spawn sound.c. That's a file that I created in my project. So uh, there's this uh, value here, if I uh, zoom in. So this DJ, DJ uh, sound uh, module, DG sound module, is like the callbacks for my functions. Uh, so it's there to, to be used. And then in my start sound function, I just like uh, pass the data to uh, the shared buffer that I said before. But SEP is the information that Dooms gives us that is the pan of the sound. So that's quite interesting. But Godot doesn't have a pan option in the audio stream player. That's unfortunate. So what I did in my Doom CPP file, and I wanted to, to, show, to show you this because when you use CPP, uh, uh, it's like, it's like when, if you use GDScript. Like it's the same API, it's the same function, it's the same way. If you do it in GDScript, you, you'll be able to do it in C++, and if you do it in C++, you pretty much 
are able to do it in GDScript for the API. So for each solid instruction, I just uh, pan, uh, remap, uh, use the utility functions. So utility, fu utility functions are the global functions that are available in GDScript. So you can remap. So I remap uh, here uh, the separation. I put it from 0 to int 8 max. So it's 0 to uh, one se one te 127, 2, minus 1, and 1. And then I set the position of uh, the channel. So what it does when I, the channels, the channel is uh, auto stream player 2D. So what I did is pretty, I think, ingenious. So I, I have my viewport with my 2D uh, audio stream player. And then I just change the position of the, 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 the node itself and it pans. So there's no pan option in Godot for the stream player, but you can use the 2D one and hack away your... Uh, your uh. So behind the scenes, if you play my player, you'll just know that there's nodes that just constantly move right to the left. So let's add some riffs. So uh, for those who are too young to know, this isn't only the save icon, but this is a real thing. I used it a lot in my assignments for school. It's a floppy disk, and disks like this are only 1.44 uh, megabits, uh, megabytes. Sorry. Uh, so MIDI to the rescue. So I say MIDI because uh, it's MIDI in the Doom files, but it, is, it isn't like really MIDI. You need to convert it before, but it's an internal format that they use. So you need to. I needed to parse the WAD file edit, uh, use the muse to mid file that exists in the project. I converted it back to C++ because it was easier for me. So, well, I finally got MIDI from the, uh, from the, 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 the WAD file. The WAD file is the package of a game uh, of Doom. So what is MIDI? Uh, because I talk, uh, talked about MIDI, but MIDI is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Uh, MIDI, uh, it stands for that. Uh, so imagine that you have a keyboard, a digital keyboard that you want to plug it with your rack, and then uh, it doesn't send like real sound, but it sends commands. So when you press the clock at a certain time, the sound rack will know that the sound was the 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 the, the keyboard was it at a certain time with certain force and such. So what if you do the same thing but in the file itself. So this file is very lightweight. It doesn't, it doesn't contain the recording of audio, but only instructions. It's like a music sheet. So with the timings and such. So what you do with a MIDI file is that you put this, uh, you use an instrument bank, of a digital mu instrument bank, and then you send your commands in that bank that makes uh, with the timings, and that plays music. So, uh, instrument banks make all the difference. I have a sample here of a Windows GB. But it's not like that much groovy or something like that. But if you use the Roland SC88 ST Pro, the stuff you could have uh, in 99.3, it sounds a lot more. Maybe with the uh, system, it does sound exactly the same. Trust me, it isn't. Oh. So, how to play MIDI in Godot? So, um, what to do then? There's no MIDI support in Godot. Yeah. So, you could create a proposal to include MIDI support in Godot. Yes, but how many projects would really use this? That's a question for us maintainers that must ask ourselves. Uh, but there's a solution before our very own eyes. There's Fluid Synth, that is a library for C and C++. Uh, that library uh, is cross-platform and you can use it. You can even specify your own instruments. Uh, so that's really nice and it plays MIDI. So uh, I implemented it. I used the doc and I used the uh, fluid synth to play music. I'll just skip ahead because I don't have much time left. So I'll next, next. That's uh, that plays. That's the game. Create a new player. And then 
uh, I can create a new player, get the stored MIDI file that I extracted, and then add it to memory, then play it. And it plays exactly as you heard. So demo of the Doom player, I'll just uh, take a quick, uh, quick, quick, if do, uh, play if you want to just support the mic again. So I'll just uh, make sure that I, uh, I see everything. So I'll just move my mouse uh, here, but it doesn't show. Okay, clone. Okay, so I'll use, uh, I opened up something that was already ready, uh, but I closed it. Uh, I'll open up here. CD, CD, it will be CD builds, uh, no, tests, Godot, uh, Godot Doom player. I'll do Godot editor here. And then my my laptop is uh, not the fastest one. Just wait a moment. I, I promise you it will be good. So you see, there's. I go back to my slides. So, in conclusion, um, why this project? Well, this project wouldn't exist uh, without GD extension and sharing memory MIDI. As you saw, it's not possible in GD script alone. Tips going forward: I am really, really fast on this. Try C and C++. Uh, try C before C++ if you can. You can even try uh, use online editors for this, like uh, rippledit.com. Uh, you can set up C projects and just hack away. Uh, learn about pointers. They cannot hurt you, even if others say otherwise. Uh, pointers are the weird arrows uh, that you see and the stars. Uh, there's a good le uh, video of low-level learning about that. I highly suggest you to read it. Uh, object and or pointers and ref contents are ref uh, and with uh, carrots. Well, it's still a pointer, but a special one. Uh, next, next, next. I'll, I'll show you how to instantiate ones. And contribute back to Godot. GD extension and Godot CPP are made to behave like a native Godot module. Don't be afraid. So that's all. I have some special thanks. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for listening to me. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much, Adam Scott. I guess we have time for two questions, though, because we go to the lunch break. So keep this in oh. your hand, probably. Uh, if somebody has a question about this Godot, uh, Godot Doom port, uh, Doom Godot port, sorry. Um. How did you integrate the MIDI library with the Godot audio system? Well, I used, um, I don't remember the names exactly, but I used uh, like the, the node that makes you able to generate audio on the, list, on the, uh, on the fly. Then I passed like, uh, I, I, maybe I explained too, 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 too rapidly, but like uh, fluid scent, can you give you a buffer? And then you, I just took the buffer, put it in the, the node, that generates sounds and then it generated the music. So that's why you could hear the music. It was generated, it was played by Godot, but generated with fluid synth. So that's how you can integrate like libraries that comes from other places and then put it in Godot back. So yeah, so that's how. One last question. Uh, how did you handle input exactly? Cause you didn't cover that. Yes, uh, why well, did I input? So. 
in my Godot Doom node, I just handle the input like I would like other, any other games, so with the input loop and such. And then when I got the input, I would put that in the, the struct, in the shared memory. I would, say, I would have a map of every key that exists, and then if it's pressed or not, and then uh, if it changed, and then my Doom program, or maybe it would be trend for, from now on, but it would, could read that and then uh, apply it to go Doom. Doom will apply the logic, and then the screen buffer will return the, 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 the mutated state. So that's how I handle the input. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you, everybody.